want to give about a minute to get feedback from everybody, or do you want me to move forward here? Um, well, you can move forward. I'm uh, okay. Let's give about a minute. Um, everybody, just give me some feedback. Oh, you thought about his speech uh, for about one minute. And that's okay with Ron, or is it going to cut into? <laughs> it, it looks like we're very. You may have to give a short evaluation. It looks like we're very time limited. Yeah, so cut, why don't you just go ahead and give your opinion. I just go right into it. So overall, Tom, I think you did a very great job. You obviously prepared for the speech. Um, you use your PowerPoint effectively. As you pointed out every single, as you moved on to the next position, we could tell that you did a very thorough research for every single one of these positions. And it's a good thing you did that. Um, specifically for the club as they're moving forward with the brand new slate of officers. Um, so you actually did test a great service by, di by doing this today. Over, I didn't really see anything in terms of efficiency. You were looking into the camera, so that's good. Your lighting in the background is awesome. Um, the only thing I can probably say that is your background, is that your actual background? Like your actual, like that's the library you have behind you? It's or, just a library I'm having. Maybe it's not the best thing, but it's a my own. It's just my own, but it's not a background provided by Zoom. Okay. It's just it's something I thought. I'd yeah. It looks it looks good. Uh, it just uh, yeah, it looks fine. It looks good. So I would say maybe try to focus it where it doesn't distract too much with the background. It's just the uh, so. maybe cluttered, a little cluttered. Maybe yeah. Simplify, simplify it, maybe. Yeah, just a more simplify okay. where it's not too distracting. Um, overall, the lighting you have is a lot better than I have right now, so that's probably the only thing I can say right now for that for the short duration time that I have before we have to start the new meeting. So fortunately, um, I'll write you something up to, for a better evaluation if that helps you out. Okay, I actually have a pre-printed list I could email you if you, you, you yeah, don't have that's fine. Maybe I'll email that to you and you can. Yeah. I'll okay. do that for sure. We'll have to wait till 11 in the morning to see at least before I can do that. Okay. Yep. So, like I said, everybody pretty much would say you were well organized and prepared. So, okay. I'm sorry, sorry to cut. Sorry to cut you short. I apologize okay. for that. We want it. We can't like we. we There's a great opportunity to meet with residents. This this gonna be neat. Yes. So with that, we're going into our meeting. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to give it back to John Carlisle <laughs> to start the meeting off. So I'm going to give it to the man, the myth, the legend, John Carlisle, Sergeant Major at Arms. Good morning. Once again, I get to welcome you twice this morning. Good morning, Dogwood Toastmasters. Good morning and welcome, Resonance Toastmasters. What a treat we have for today. I guess we've already read our, our ritual reading of the uh, Toastmasters mission statement. So. Uh, I think we need not do that again, but just want to extend a warm welcome to residents for our second joint meeting. And I, and I will point out that our first joint meeting uh, helped warm us up for this, this Zoom world that we're living in now. I would like to introduce uh, the president of Resonance Toastmasters. Is the president present right now? I'm looking for Aditya. Yes, sir, I'm here, I'm present. Ah, there we are. So please welcome the president of Resonance Toastmasters, Aditya. Hello, everyone. Uh, a warm greetings to all my dear fellow Toastmasters and guests across the world. It's so nice uh, meeting you. Two weeks of uh, meticulous preparation and bang, here we are. A time to stop all the preparation and a time to start our celebration. Uh, speaking of time, a very good morning to Dogwood Toastmasters and a very good morning to uh, Resonance Toastmasters. I told about uh, the celebration. Well, what are we going to celebrate? We are going to celebrate Father's Day. Tomorrow we are going to have Father's Day. Hence, we decided to have a meeting that is solely dedicated to all the wonderful fathers throughout the world. Just to give you a context uh, to my friends in Atlanta, 
I come from a middle class Indian family and I live with my parents. Uh, typically in an Indian family, there is no much communication between a son and a father. Most of the communication happens between a son and the mother. And, and my father goes to office uh, morning at 8.30 a.m. He returns home at around 7.30 uh, a.m. in the evening. So there is no much possibility of having a quality time uh, with my father on a daily basis. Well, communication does happen between me and my father, but only if I do some, if I do a grave mistake and my father wants to scold me. My father is a really great person. One day, uh, when I was 15 years old, I had finished my uh, schooling and, and I had and I had come home. Uh, and I was I was really free and we had a car at home and since I was bored I decided to take the car out and call my friends do some shopping and have fun and return home and my mom and dad never knew this at that point of time they, they, they never knew that I'm going to take my, the car outside so uh, I, I took the car outside and the fun part here is I was 15 years old and the legal age for driving in our country is 18 years old. So I had no license and I was not the legal age. With all the craziness uh, during my teenage years, I took the car and I went out with my friends. We had a great time indeed. I, I went shopping, then we went to a restaurant. We had a lot of food there, amazing time. And while coming back from the restaurant at the parking lot, when I was with my friends and the car was right next to me, I encountered someone. I was standing in face to face with none other than my father. I was shocked. In fact, I expected a great breakdown at, at that point of time. My father is a very angry person. I thought he would shout at me, Aditya, what are you doing with the car? But I was astonished. My father did not speak a word. He did not speak a word. He left from that place as though he never saw me. I was rather shocked. And that night I came back home and I expected that my father would shout at me. But then again, something awkward happened and he kept quiet. We had dinner. I expected that this topic would come out on the dinner table. But again, my dad remained silent. And I was getting more and more anxious. The more silent he was, the more anxious I became. I could not tolerate. After dinner, I went to his room and I asked, Dad, is, is, is everything all right with you? And then my dad uh, spoke to me and he said that, Dear son, I did a grave mistake. I was shocked once again. and I couldn't tolerate this. Actually speaking, the mistake was mine. I was not... Uh, I have not attained the legal age and I took the car outside without my dad's permission. Clearly it was my mistake, but then my dad was saying that it was his mistake. And I, I, I didn't understand and I asked him that you did not do any mistake. Can you please explain what happened? And my dad told that it was my mistake to teach you driving at such a young age. Well, something, it appeared like a hammer was banging on my head. Well, actually speaking, that was not his mistake. My father taught me driving. And while driving, he also taught me not to break the traffic rules and to take out the car only with his permission. Even if I'm driving, he should be accompanying with me. That is what he told. And at the end, when he told all this, I promised him, I had promised him that I would obey his words. But then that day, I broke the promise and I took the car outside. I didn't know what to say. I felt deeply upset and I returned back to my home. I, I returned back to my room. I realized a lesson that day. All our fathers set an example. They teach you how to live life. They teach you driving. They teach you communication. They teach you all the sort of stuff the father know to their respective child. And they also give us the freedom. And they also trust us with that freedom. 
that we will not misuse that freedom. My father did the same and I had misused the freedom and I felt really upset for that. I also realized that how great my father was to teach me driving at such a young age. And I should really be grateful for that. I should really be grateful for all the fathers out there. I don't see father as just a father. Fathers are someone who are creators. My father created me. Of course, my mom was involved, but it would not have been possible without my father. Fathers set examples. Fathers lay the foundation. Fathers give us the freedom and fathers trust us. And it was not just my father. It was all the fathers throughout the world, not just the fathers of their of their kids, but the father of science, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, he laid the foundation for science. And father of Toastmasters, he gave us a wonderful club called Toastmasters Club. The father of Resonance Toastmasters, who, who, who created, who found our club, the distinguished Toastmaster Jagadish, who is very much here in the meeting. We must be grateful to all these fathers. And hence, this meeting is solely dedicated to all, all the dear fathers who taught us life. With this note, I declare our International Linkers Meet with Dogwood Toastmasters and Resonance Toastmasters open. With this, I would like to hand over the stage to the president of the Dogwood Toastmasters. So before I hand over, I would like to introduce him. The president of Dogwood Toastmasters is Toastmaster Sal Vega. He has been a member of Dogwood Toastmasters since 2015 and he's from California and he's serving as a captain in US Army. And he is going to relocate to Los Angeles where he's going to be managing a Starbucks out outlet. All the best for managing your Starbucks outlet, Toastmaster Salvega. Here I call upon the president of Dogwood Toastmasters, Toastmaster Salvega. Thank you, Toastmaster. Adwitya, <clears throat> did I get that right? Adwitya? Yes, 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 yes. You, know, you got it right. Outstanding. So, um, thank you. Uh, uh, that was a great introduction. Um, and yes, it's very important that we have our, our fathers are very important to all of us. And it's a great thing that we celebrate this day for Father's Day. Um, so this is our second joint meeting that we've had in the past. I want to say this is, this is the second one we had one last year. So with that, I wanted to proceed forward um, and move it over to... So... I'm going to mess his name up, but the, the, the Toastmaster of the day is Toastmaster Sayani, Sayanas? Sayanat? Sayanat, yes, good. I'm going to pass it over to her for the Toastmaster of the day. Um, please give her a big welcome as we can begin the second joint meeting that we're going to be having today. Please give her a big round of applause, everybody. And as a reference, we use, we use our hands in the air like you don't care to represent clapping. <laughs> is it a, Cyan, is she on? Hello. Hello, Hello. there you go. Am, there I, you am go. I audible? Yes. Yeah. Floor is yours. Okay. okay. Thanks, uh, Sal Vega, for your introduction. Um, and a uh, very good evening to fellow Toastmasters and Toastmasters from Dogwood and honored guests. I'm really on cloud nine to witness synergy of two clubs, Dogwood and Resonance. For all of you, your father might have been a hero of your life, but in my case, the picture is other way around. My father was villain of my life. At least, to be precise, during the time of my academics. He had one mantra of success for me, that is study, study, and 
study. He seldom allowed me to play with my friends, to play sports, to hang out with my friends, watch television, so on and so forth. But he could go to any extent to see to that I excel in academics. When I reflect on my life, I think that he was just pretending to be a villain so that I succeed in my life. Oftentimes, I have seen love and affection of mother is compared to that of fathers. In fact, there is no comparison. If mother loves till you close your eyes, father is one who loves without an expression in his eye. If mother protects you from a fall, father teaches you how to get up from a fall. Mother teaches you walking, whereas father teaches you walk of life. Mother's love is known to you since birth, whereas father's love is known when you become a father. I'd like to share with Dago Toastmasters Club that I became father more than a year before year ago, and I have a beautiful daughter. Well, all fathers are magnanimous, and I don't have words in my kitty to explain magnanimity of my father. Yeah. Well, from my father, let us switch to godfather of Toastmasters. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, for the benefit of the guests particularly, Toastmasters movement was started in year 1924 in Santa Ana, California, USA by visionary godfather called Ralph C. Smedley. Since its inception in year 1924, Toastmaster has emerged as a leader in leadership and communication program. As things stand, Toastmaster has a membership base of more than 3 lakh 70,000 members with seven, more than 17,000 clubs spanning over more than 143 countries. Now, I would like to walk over a few aspects of Dogwood Toastmasters Club because as we are having linkers meeting with them, Dogwood Toastmasters Club was founded in year 1955 in Atlanta, Georgia, USA, located close to the heart of Atlanta, very near to the Center for Disease Control and Emory University. Dogwood has been a President's Distinguished Club for 17 years. Hmm. That's quite an achievement, isn't it? Residence Toastmasters Club was founded in year 2012 and chartered in year 2013 by former founding fathers like Toastmaster Jagdish, Toastmaster Zulfika, Toastmaster Virupaksha, and others. Started with five members, today Toastmasters, Resonance Toastmasters has mushroomed to more than 50 members. A typical Toastmasters meeting consists of prepared speeches, prepared speakers, prepared the speeches based on the objectives of the speech. The second session is table topic session in which a topic is thrown at members and they need to speak for one or two minutes without preparation. And the last but not the least session that is evaluation session, which gives feedback on whole aspect of the meeting. Well, now today we have a small twist because we are following almost uh, the conventions of Dabur Toastmasters Convent uh, Club. So we have, I'll be introducing uh, the four minute uh, portrait and uh, the first among portrait. Before I call upon first among the portrait, I would like to introduce about his father. His father was originally from Brooklyn, New York, and owned and operated a successful retail floor 
covering business. For almost 30 years, his father carried heavy rolls of carpet on his shoulders so that his family could live a comfortable suburban life. Hello Toastmasters, please put your hands together for the fabulous son of this father, Toastmaster Ron Cravert. Can I have Ron Cravert on the screen please? <clears throat> good morning and good evening fellow Toastmasters. Our word for today is magnanimous. It is an adjective meaning generous in forgiving an insult or free from petty resentfulness or vindictiveness, to be magnanimous towards one's enemies. High-minded or noble, a just and magnanimous ruler. Proceeding from or revealing generosity or nobility of mind, character, and magnanimous gesture of forgiveness. Properly used in a sentence, you might say that a magnanimous person has a generous spirit, letting your little sister have the last cookie, even though you hadn't eaten since breakfast, would be considered a magnanimous act. Over to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thanks, Ron. Now, before I call upon philosopher of the day, let me introduce our father. I'm introducing father because of course, we are celebrating Father's Day. Her father was an entomology professor at University of Florida. He taught a course in beekeeping and was a beekeeper himself. She used to go with him when he would move his beehives to places where there were more callers. Put your hands together, fellow Toastmasters, to welcome Toastmaster Edwina Spivey as philosopher of the day. Thank you for that introduction. And I'm going to give you some statements about fathers. And these are things that you might want to write on your Father's Day card to personalize it. So, Dad, you're the first person I think of when I have a question or just need some good advice. Thank you for always being there for me. Dad, you have given me the best things in life, your time, your care, and your love. I'm truly grateful to have you in my life. Although time and distance may separate us, your guidance, advice, and love have have stuck with me through it all. I would not be who I am today without you. I'm proud to be your daughter. Happy Father's Day to my hero and role model. I'm not perfect and neither are you, but I do think you're the perfect dad for me. A father is neither an anchor to hold us back, nor a sail to take us there, but a guiding light whose love shows us the way. The older I get, the smarter my father seems to get. Dad, you may not know everything, but you sure had me fooled for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And I'm now I'm turning it back over to the Toastmaster. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Edwina. Now, I, before I call upon um, one minute Toastmaster, uh, I'd like to introduce her father. Her father departed when she was 21. He was warm and had a great sense of humor. Put your hands together to welcome Toastmaster Kathy as one minute Toastmaster. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. My one minute Toastmaster today has to do with speaking with others who have a different accent as we, than we do, or 
those whose first language is different than our own. So here are some ideas for how to communicate more effectively. One, be sure to speak slowly and clearly and to enunciate so that you can be easily understood. Number two, speak up. Speak loudly enough so that we can hear you, but not so loudly that you come across as shouting. Don't worry if you make a mistake. Toastmasters are unfailingly magnanimous when we make mistakes. It's how we learn. And number three, avoid the temptation to mimic the verbal fillers used by native speakers in an effort to sound more like a native speaker. For instance, don't intentionally throw in an occasional you know or like just to sound fluent. Also, if you don't use profanity in your native language, avoid the temptation to use it in your second language. Toastmasters is about learning to communicate effectively, and we learn by doing. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thanks, Kathy. <clears throat> now, we'll uh, ready to tickle funny bones as the next Toastmaster who is going to come is going to tell us a joke. Please put your hands together for the joke master of the day, Binchi. Toastmaster Binchi. I hope Toastmaster Binchi is around. Bing, you need to unmute. Yeah, I think he's unmuted himself. Uh, Binchi, uh, Toastmaster Binchi, uh, could you please unmute yourself? Ron, can you unmute her? Bing is not on mute. Can she, can I she hear that. us? Yeah, I can hear, yeah, sorry. I think the internet, the signal is awake for me, yeah. Yeah, so, Toastmaster Binji, please go ahead. Okay, good morning Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, and uh, distinguished guest. Actually, this morning I have prepared for the joke of the tax, but tomorrow is a Father's Day, so I would like to share something about the father. Never ask your father for a joke unless you want a bad one and always ask father for advice if you need it. Father have a wealth of both. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Toastmaster Binji. Thanks. Uh, that was uh, quoted uh, for the day for all of you. And with that, we move on to general evaluator of the day. Today's general evaluator, he has been member of Dogwood Toastmaster since India won World Cup. I know all Indian Toastmasters are guessing the year. Yes, he has been part of Toastmasters since 1983. He is a retired software consultant for both B2B technologies and SunTrust Bank, and he is a graduate of Vanderbilt University. He is an avid fan of the theater and is the proud owner of a little dog named Saxon. Now, time to introduce his father. After his 99th birthday, our general evaluator's father told him a piece of wisdom. And what it is, I quote, you don't get to be a 99 without the help of a lot of people. There are a lot of people I need to thank, unquote. Please put your hands together for general evaluator of the day, Toastmaster Hal Flack. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I'm not familiar uh, with how we're doing general evaluator now because uh, it doesn't seem like it's 
the evaluation portion of the meeting, is it? Um, I just have a point of order question about what is my role here? Uh, Hal, you're only uh, supposed to introduce the uh, tag, uh, the tag role takers, the timer, accounter, and the grammarian, and just introduce your role to everyone. I got it. Okay. Okay. Well, our timer is from Renaissance, and you'll have to help me there too. <laughs> I'd appreciate if somebody would help me because I don't have the uh, actually current roster. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, Hal. This is Tosmasa uh, Ilan Govan from Resonance. Okay. So shall I share the screens for the timings? Yes, yes, that'd be that'd be great because right. we're all right. on with how you do timing here at Calgary. Yes. So we the timings for the speeches are like this. For the prepared speeches, the times are especially we have got an icebreaker speech that is the timing between four to five, six minutes. So at the end of four minutes, I will be sharing a screen that will be turning to green actually. So that is a screen and that will be followed by a simple one uh, ring. And then after five minutes, I'll be having like this and the screen also will change to amber. At the time of at six minutes, I'll be giving this. So the screen will change to actually red. So this is for the speaker number one. So speaker number two, it is timing is between five to seven minutes. So at the five to the minute, the screen will change to green color. Sixth minute, it will change to amber color. And the seventh minute, it will change to red color. And for the table topics, the timings are two minutes, one to two minutes. So at the end of first minute, the screen will change to green color. And one minute and 30 seconds will change to uh, amber color and two minutes will change to red color. Every speaker has got a uh, grace time of 30 seconds. And for the evaluation speeches, the timing is between two to three minutes. So at the second minute, the screen will change to green. Two minutes and 30 seconds, it will change to amber and uh, after three minutes it stains to red i think uh, with that over to you general evaluator ah thank you thank you and uh, our vote counter today is uh, ron cravat and uh, will you explain how you will handle vote counting at this meeting ron at this meeting i will be using the polling feature of zoom and after the timer gives me the time after Elan Govan gives me the timing report. I will post the polling for each individual section of the meeting. And then at the end of the meeting, I will share the results. Over to you, Master Evaluator. Oh, great, great. And uh, I think we're ready to go for me to turn control back over to the, to the Toastmaster. Yeah, can we have brief, brief introductions from our counter and grammarian? Oh, yes. Yeah, that is important. So uh, our counter is um, McKinji, McKinji, and uh, the, the, um, the our counter and who else uh, do I need to? Grammarian. The grammarian, the, 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 and that the, is somebody the, I don't know either. Uh, from Renaissance. So uh, should I have a schedule? I'll ask that. I'll pose that question. Uh, is there, was it emailed or is it available with all the names? Mr. Hal, if it is okay with you, can I go ahead as a grammarian? Yes. Yes. Perfect. This is Jagadish from Resonance Toastmasters. Hello Toastmasters and welcome guest. As a grammarian, it is my responsibility to pay close attention to all speakers, listening carefully to the language usage. I will take note of any misuse of the English language, as well as any outstanding uses, quotes, saying, or thoughts. As a grammarian, it is also my duty to introduce the word of the day. For so today's meeting, the word is magnanimous, which means generous or forgiving 
especially towards uh, towards a person who's got lesser power. Example is parents are magnanimous towards their kids. Each speaker is encouraged to use the word of the day. I will I will give a word of the day report and grammatical usage report when you call upon after the meeting. With this, or to Hal. Ah, thank you, thank you. And uh, last, last, last but the not, last, uh, least is uh, our counter, uh, Toastmaster Nakenji. Could you please come forward on screen and uh, explain in brief for the benefit of the guests about your our counter role? Greetings, fellow Toastmasters and guests. My duties are to record all the as, ums, the you knows, the long pauses, and other inappropriate verbal habits that we often have as speakers, and to report these results at the end of the meeting. Over to you. Uh, great. Great. And Sai, are we ready now for the rest of the yes. meeting? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Thank yes. You. Thanks. Thanks. Um, now, without further ado, let us uh, straight away dive into this first session of our meeting, that is speech session. And before I call upon first speaker, I would like to call upon her evaluator. Now, uh, our first evaluator is from Resonance Toastmasters. Uh, he has uh, come a long way in a very short period of time, I can say. Because in just two years in Toastmasters, he has already uh, acting as an uh, showing maturity of 20 years uh, veteran Toastmaster. He's working as a design engineer at Deutsche Bahn. Uh, and before I call upon him, I would like to uh, introduce his father. Incidentally, his father is also a Toastmaster. His dad is amazing impersonator who likes to mimic actors and at times the way their relatives talk. He's also a singer. Put your hands together for the amazing son of amazing father, Toastmaster Arjun. Thank you, Arjun. Toastmaster Sai. Yeah. Yes. A very good morning and a very good evening to an all present here. Well, it's the first time that I'm using both the wishes at the same time. I'm glad to use that in such a way. So Toastmaster Fern today is attempting her icebreaker speech and uh, following are the objectives. The purpose of this project is for the member to introduce herself to the club and learn the basic structure of public speaking. Timer, please note that the timing is about four to six minutes. Thank you and over to you. Thanks. Thanks, Toastmaster Arjun, for spelling out objectives of the speech. Now, our first speaker is a veteran of Dagood's Toastmaster Club, who was club's president back in 1990s. She will be doing her icebreaker speech from the visionary communication path. The timing will be four to six minutes. Since she is a long time Toastmaster, she wants to make her make this experience a bit more challenging. Therefore, she will be doing an extemporaneous icebreaker speech. Members from Dogwood Toastmasters, one of the members from Dogwood Toastmasters Club will provide her with a topic immediately before it is her time to speak. And as a convention of this meeting, I'm introducing her dad, her dad was an astute businessman, a spontaneous mischief maker with a twinkle in his eye and sometimes more fun than second date. She never went on. Fellow Toastmasters from both the club, put your hands together for our very first speaker for her impromptu icebreaker, Toastmaster Fun. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and very welcome guests. I like to think that I am a risk taker, not your ordinary 
dangerous, death-defying risk taker, but a risk taker nonetheless. I took the risk getting my topic, my subject for the day for my um, icebreaker speech. And I thought about it over the course of the week as to what could possibly, what, what kind of topic or subject I could possibly get. Well, I did get one and it's the sound of music. And part of the risk that I took came from my father, which is amazing because he was a magnanimous risk taker. Also, not the dangerous, death-defying type of risk taker, but a risk taker nonetheless. And I learned a lot from my father because he, his idea was now is someday. Whenever, he, whenever we went and did something, it was now is someday. You can't wait. And when you do take risks, you never know what is in the making, what is in the forecast, what will happen to you, where you are going to go, and what is the next event. People like to think that planning was going to be a, a, a wonderful thing. I would follow through with all my plans. But there's an old Yiddish saying, man tracht und Gott lacht, which translates into man plans and God laughs. So my father, during the course of his life, always taught me that you make a plan, but expect, expect diversion, the path not taken, the road not taken, and you never know what's going to happen. When I was a kid, my dad, who was a pilot for many, many years, would say, you want to go flying this afternoon? And I'm like, well, where are we going to go? And his response was, if you get in the airplane, you go where the airplane goes. And so without knowing where we were going, often as kids, we would jump in a small Cessna and end up in who knows where. Some, sometimes on my birthday, one time on my birthday, we ended up in Florida. And one time we ended up in Colorado. So wherever the airplane was going, that's where we ended up. And it, and it didn't occur to me till much later in my life that even though my dad was spontaneous and took these risks, he always had a backup plan. When you fly in the small airplanes, as you do on commercial airlines, you have to have a flight plan. You have to have the maps. You have to have the radar signals. And so when you're taking risks, you have to know these things and the possibilities that can go wrong, and you have to think about it. Now you wonder, so where does the music come in? Music comes in many different forms when you take risks. Sometimes the music is there where you have to listen and calm yourself down because your plan didn't go as planned. Sometimes the music is in the silence or the, the air when you're in a glider flying with no engine and there's music with the birds hanging over a canopy or the wind flashing by the glider. And there's risks in that. Who goes flying without an airplane? Who goes flying without an engine? So these were some of the risks and the activities that my father showed me as a young child. And I have taken that to heart because as an adult, I have found that I am much better flying by the seat of my pants than it is for me to make out a meticulous and formal plan and try and follow it to the T and make sure that everything goes as planned. Now I'm gonna try and share, if I can get the approval to share some pictures of my dad and some of the things 
that he did. So Ron, could I get a, a share? Okay. So That'd here, be good. let me see if I can find my pit photos. So here was a picture of my mom and me. You can look and see my dad on roller skates. If you look very closely, we're both on roller skates. If you look again, you can see how my dad had all these old cars to try. And you can see again, my dad the superhero, Mr. Mr. Toastmaster. Did everybody go mute? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Thanks. Hello. Thanks, Toastmaster Fern, for that uh, wonderful speech. Indeed, um, we are, you know, delighted to know about your father. Before I introduce next speaker, I'd like to introduce the evaluator of second speaker. Our evaluator for second speaker has been in Toastmasters for the last 25 years. Her father, who joined Toastmasters during World War II, while stationed in Cambridge, England, in her, is her inspiration. Captain Carlson, serving under General Eisenhower there, delivered the eulogy to President Franklin D. Roosevelt when he died in 1945. She honors him today for his military service and his, and his competency in Toastmasters. It's my honor to invite daughter of such an exemplary father. Put your hands together for Toastmaster K. Kelson as evaluator for speaker number two. Toastmaster K. Kelson, could you please highlight the objectives of speech number two? Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and especially Varun Malavali. The purpose of Varun's speech today is to clearly define how Toastmasters envisions mentoring and to share his own, as, his own per perspective of previous experience as a protege. Please welcome Varun Malavali. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, before Varun Malavali comes, uh, Toastmaster Varun comes, I would like to introduce him. Yeah, our next speaker, of course, is Varun Malavali. Uh, he is from Resonance Toastmasters Club uh, and has been part of uh, Toastmasters movement for the last five years. He's a voracious reader and a movie buff. He dedicates his passion for communication and cricket to his father, Mr. M. K. Ram Prasad. His father, Mr. M. K. Ram Prasad, was ardent follower of cricket, and his eyes would be glued to television till the result of the match. The title of Varun's speech is "Oh Mentor, My Mentor." Please join me in welcoming our area. Director, the next area director of our area, Toastmaster Varun. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster Sai. Uh, yes, uh, Toastmaster Alango one, uh, you can start the timer. Thank you. I concluded the speech with one of the iconic dialogues in Hindi cinema, Jao Simran, Jile Apni Sindagi, Go Simran, Live Your Life. 
I was kicking myself as I founded Quiet Silly. I had participated in my first humorous speech contest, which was written in a day and was certainly not mentored. Fellow Toastmasters and dear guests, does mentoring matter? Please reserve your answers until I complete the speech. After the uneventful performance, I continued my Toastmasters journey, having barely given the icebreaker. Two speeches hence, I felt the need for another prospector. I harked back to the contest, which was judged by two powerful women. One among them mesmerized me with her pronunciation, voice, and pizzazz. As she was from another company, I managed to find her number from a club member. When I called her, certain that she would not remember me, I said, Hi, Kavya, this is Varun from Manyata Nos Toastmasters. I was one of the participants in the interclub contest at Nokia a few months ago. She immediately said with a beaming smile, Hi, Varun. Yes, I remember. Your speech was on the wedding scene and you mimicked Amrish Puri, the, the actor who mouthed the famous dialogue. The speech was funny. What? Was I hearing things? I made sure if she was referring to the same contest. She assuaged my doubts with an emphatic, of course. Having realized that she was already a distinguished Toastmaster and also in a good position professionally, I was not sure if she would agree to be my mentor. The uncertainty melted away thanks to a warm, sure. Around the same time, I had completed a year in my professional life. I approached, I used to approach my senior colleagues or my manager for professional advice. At that time, my manager advised me to seek a mentor. I was clear with regards to my choice, but would he accept me? Our love for tennis and Federer was not going to ensure that I become his protege, though I had broken the ice. This time, the warmth of the ascent was accompanied by hot tea at Chai Point. As a protege, I approached both my mentors fully knowing that they are empathetic. Their friendly disposition enabled me to approach them. DTM Kavya Gowda focused on my positives in our very first conversation. Both my mentors being achievers in their own right is a mere coincidence. However, I look for commitment to the cause of my improvement as the only criterion. I have always been suspicious of flattery. So I wanted a mentor who doesn't sugarcoat the truth. Besides, I like only my desserts that way. Both my mentors have been brutally honest. I remember one speech where I intended to question the edifice of feminism. Most of my mails would be responded with good to go or no changes required, but I received a lengthy mail on that occasion. She had been my mentor for close to four years then. The mail literally tore into my ignorance and was accompanied by a link to a speech by the author Chimamanda Adichie. My illusions of being a feminist were shattered and the speech was salvaged to such an extent I dedicated it to the women who had a huge influence on my life. At the depths of despair, my profession. Sorry for that, I'm getting some calls. At the depths of despair, my professional mentor 
arranged for an interview, though we both were in different organizations, results notwithstanding. That was truly a magnanimous gesture from him. I have approached many people for advice on specific skills or professional expertise. But whenever I wanted an answer for questions like, was my speech not good enough to win a contest? Or can I take up the role of the president of my club? Or what do I need to do for my professional growth? I could not think of two better people to put me at ease. Oprah Winfrey has said, a mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside yourself. When Kavya responded to my mail, she insisted that I quote her. She said, with you, it's the easiest mentoring relationship I've ever had. You come with a cup that is easy to pour into. So as much credit as you give your mentors, please know this would never work if you didn't meet us more than halfway each time. I am truly humbled by the words of my mentor. In conclusion, I only wish that I can emulate DTM Kavya Gowda and Mr. Rishab as I guide my proteges to the pastures they seek with empathy, with warmth, and an assured hand. Now tell me, does it matter? Does it matter? Toastmaster of the day, over to you. Over to you, Toastmaster. Uh, I think Sai is facing some network issue. He is yeah. Not able no, I'm there. I'm there. Sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, there is no power as of now. All of a sudden, power has gone. Okay. I think uh, it's time, Master Varun. Thanks, Toast. Master Varun, for your speech. Uh, now it's time for a five minutes break and we will have poll uh, which will be conducted by Toastmaster Ronald. Toastmaster Ronald. Toastmaster Ronald. These folk are either Fern Garber or Arun Merlin Valley. Great. We are running now. And there's so We still have 14 votes to come. Ron, did Ron, we're seeing the results, not the poll. We're seeing the, the, the results of the voting, not the poll itself. People have voted already. No, we are not able to vote. We are not able to vote actually. We can't we vote. Answers. We're only seeing the results of the vote. We have to redo it, maybe. Well, 31 people have voted already. Uh, on one of my devices, I can see the poll. On the other side, on the other device, I only see the results. So some people are getting one thing, and some people are getting another. Uh, so let's see, we have a total of 42 people. How many people have voted? 41. Now we've got the table topics poll up. What so, is going on here? Is someone else? One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't forget, six people can't vote because either they're the co host or the host. Yeah. You're a co host or host, you can't vote. So we have 30. So out of 40, we have about four that haven't responded. Well, some of us just can't vote because we're getting, right now we're seeing voting for best table topics participant. What is that? Just has two choices. And asking if I want to launch the poll, which I don't know why I would want to launch the poll. I have no idea why that is happening. That is totally bizarre. But so, I have that 35 people have voted. Yeah. So, yeah, 
one of the things I was going to mention, if you're a co-host or you're a host, you'll sometimes see it come up if you want to initiate the poll. Uh, but like I said, as a co-host or host, you can't vote. Yeah, you can, also, we can, as co-hosts, we can also initiate a poll. So if you want to vote, you have to do that on the, by a, send it by a message. So just a FYI. That's why, because you were made a co-host at some point during the meeting. That's why. Yeah. All yeah. right, so the people that have not been able to vote are myself, Ellen Govan is, not, is unable to vote, Ellery and Kay unable to vote, Fern, Fern. Dal Vega is unable to vote, and that should be about it. Everyone else was able to vote. Yeah, so we're just, we, we can just send you our votes via text. Yeah, by your that's, that's what happened. Yeah, I just, I noticed that when I'm the co-host, so. Yeah, it wasn't really weird for me. Okay, Ryan, did everybody, did both of them qualify though? Time wise. Who's the timer? Yes, uh, both of them qualified. Okay. Uh, yeah, both of them qualified. First speaker took uh, five minutes and uh, 50 seconds. The second speaker uh, took seven minutes and zero seven seconds. Right. Okay. Okay, so that's that's why you couldn't see it. What I can do for the next time is I could temporarily revoke the co-host status for your meeting, then you'll be able to vote. But we had a clear winner this time. So, next thirty minutes is going to be uh, tight. For, uh... <laughs> right. Well, we did say that the meeting would last until eight p.m. ten thirty. Yeah. So yeah, ten ten thirty Zulu, as they say. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know if it's Zulu. I think Zulu time is a little bit different. Well, where I was, it was local time, but then I was in Europe. So. Oh, yeah. No, because I think Zulu time, I forget. You have to look it up. Um, I don't used to have this big, like, watch where I was at the, I was in the jock, the Joint Operations Center in Honduras. I had this big clock, and it had, like, all the world time, and that Zulu time. So that was pretty interesting. Yeah. We always use Zulu time, so because there was a time difference, is always between three to five hours or six hours, eight hours. So, and Sergeant at Arms, I have to ask, are we on break? And if so, at what time are we reconvening? Yeah, I guess we were on break. We're supposed to be on break for five minutes, so that was probably about three minutes ago. Five, 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 five minutes ago. I'm not sure. John, John, I have a question okay. Is D coming back for the other part of the meeting? D is D is has uh, gone in the other room to uh, okay. do her work for the day. Okay. Okay. I think five minutes are five minutes are up. Uh, can we start with our table topic session? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, anybody object to starting? No. Then we Shall go. we reconvene? <laughs> Take All it. in favor, remain in your rectangles. Are we getting ready to start? I'm a little confused about what's going on. Yeah, I think I think let's start uh, table topics because five minutes are already done. We have given one one minute of grace <laughs> time. I think. Okay, so let's start our second session. That is a table topic session, and we have two table topic masters. They will be giving uh, uh, five table topics each to the members. And uh, before I call upon first table topic master,
uh, I would like to introduce her in a brief. Uh, our first table topic master is from Resonance Toastmasters Club. She is working as an equity research analyst. She is utilizing lockdown period to learn belly dancing and piano. She was going through turbulent times recently and her father came to her rescue. He said, my woman, it's okay to feel what you feel, but it's not okay how it affects you. Please welcome our division champion of table topics, Toastmaster Lavanya as table topic master. Thank you so much, Sai. And am I audible to everyone? If am I audible, give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Sai, and very good morning to one and all in America and good evening to all my Indian friends. Today table topic is gonna be very funny and very easy, super super easy. And I'll tell it as easy, peasy, and breezy. Uh, so before I start table topic, I would like to give uh, uh, the introduction to table topic because this time I went to you know uh, contestant to table topic uh, contest. It made me realize table topic is very easy if you master the art, and this is a platform where you master the art. So table topic is all about impromptu, like you know. Uh, 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 understanding and learning the impromptu speaking ability and also it will it will help you to talk to your dad whenever he is really mad at you or crazy at you and there's a very easy peasy breezy sort of a way where you can convince your daddy or your parents and uh, and, and, and ask for cash anytime so it's it's very easy it's very handy so with this, I would like to start today's table topic session. I have, uh, before I start the table topic session, I would like Toastmaster Ilangovan sir to show your, uh, to tell the timings for the table topic session. Over to so you Toastmaster Ilangovan sir. Thank you Toastmaster Lavanya. So the timings uh, for the Toastmaster table topics are like this. So, Speakers are supposed to speak for more than one minute and uh, maximum of two minutes. Of course, we got a grace period of 30 seconds. At the end of the first minute, the light uh, will, the screen will change to green and I'll be giving a sound like this. And uh, after one minute and 30 seconds, the screen will change to amber and I'll be giving. And uh, after two minutes, it'll, the screen will change to red and keep on keep showing red and the sound will be like that's it uh, table topics master thank you, you can uh, th thank you so much to master ilan govan uh, our timer is ready the table topic master is ready are you ready yes great great so here i go with the first topic who is the daddy-like figure in Toastmasters and why? I repeat again. Who is your daddy-like figure in Toastmasters and why? And this topic goes to Martha Kefart, if I'm pronouncing it right. Hello? That's Kay Kephart. Okay. Yeah. I think she's on mute. I have no, no she... Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. I have no daddy like figure because I am an old woman and I feel older probably than all the men, except maybe Ellery. And Ellery is a sexy figure. He can't be my daddy-like figure. I mean, there's no way. No, that, would be, that would be incestuous. So, and I never really had a father. So, 
um, my father was an alcoholic. He was never home. He was not abusive. And then he died when I was in my 20s. So is there anybody there that will be my daddy? I'm looking for a sugar daddy. I'm, oh, I forgot my boyfriend. He is 10 years younger than me, but he thinks he's my father. He's always telling me what to do. So isn't that what fathers do? They tell you what to do. But you know, there's other things he does that are not father-like, okay? So anyway, I don't have a real good answer for a father-like figure in Toastmasters. I mean, there are people that are smart, like Ron, and, and people that are smart that I refer to, but eh, not if they're that much younger than me. No, 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 that doesn't work. And it already doesn't work because he's too sexy. So, you know, if there's anybody that wants to hold up their hand, Ron is scratching his head. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be my father. I do need a father. But my son is the most <laughs> wonderful father I've ever known. So I have a good father um, prototype or what's the word? My son is magnan magnanimous, and he comes to my rescue. And so does my boyfriend, except when there was a snake in the house, and he said he would just hold up in the door. And I feel like a father would have gone and chopped up that snake. So anyway, this is it. The, I'm looking for a father. Thing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for letting us know that father can come in different, uh, uh, in different personalities, like a friend, like a boyfriend. Anyone could be the father. Thank you so much for the wonderful table topic, Martha. And the next topic we have, I will tell you the topic first. The most funny and the most awful memory of you as a dad. Recollect it again. Most funny and most awful memory of you as a dad. And this topic would, I would like to give this to our guest, Suhan from Kuwait, who is the guest for today's Dogwood uh, Toastmaster Club. Suhan? Um, hi, Are we connected? Oh, yes. Uh, can you? See, okay, so you can hear yeah, me, Yeah, right? I can hear you. I hope everyone is hearing. Yes. Right, let me just open myself so that you all can see the handsome guy on here. Okay, you all can see me as well, right? Okay, um, what your topic was again? Okay, most funny and also the most awful memory as you as a dad. All right. Table topic master, fellow Toastmasters, and my dear friends all around the world. Honestly speaking, I am married, but I have not become the dad yet. But I am quite excited about this. More than me, more than me, my friends, my, my relatives, and my siblings share they're more excited about it. And moreover, whenever they meet me, they only ask one question. When are you becoming daddy? When are you becoming daddy? When are you becoming daddy? I'm like, what? I mean, it's on the way, it's on the process. So it takes time. And whenever, wherever I go, I just get to meet some strangers around me. And they said, hi, how are you? How are your kids doing? I'd say, yeah, I'm good, but I don't have kids yet. What? You don't have kids yet? You must have kids. It is a blessing. I'm like, gosh, why are you behind me? I'm about to become a daddy. So you must have patience. I'm like, there's the most funniest thing that's happening around. I'm, I'm like, why are people so desperate that they want to see me becoming dad? Where I am, so where my wife is also impatient that, you know, she also keeps asking me. You know what, my friends, uh, everyone is asking me that. When are you going to become daddy? So I'm like, 
So I don't know what's going to happen next. So I, I might get more stressed about this question, so I would better pass it back to you if people ask more about it. So that's it. thank you. Over to you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster. I just like put you on the shoes on fire, but you took it on a very good note. And this is like a very burning topic for almost every bachelor and the like very newly wedded couples. And you just address them. Thank you so much, Suhan. Thank you so much for answering this wonderful question and very tricky question too. Thank you so much. So we'll go to our next favorite topic. Oh, I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> After all this coronavirus from Kuwait, we'll come to India or from India, we'll go to Kuwait or something like that. Thank you so much. Okay, next up, we have a table topic. All right. But this is a bit tricky table topic. Why? I'll let you know. Now that you know tomorrow is uh, World's Father's Day and I have been planning what should I give my father because that's a difficult job. Like men have very selected set of options to gift whereas women have a lot of options to gift. So I was just planning what do I gift uh, to like gift my father and then I thought my Toastmaster friends will help me out in this. So here is a question. What would you gift to your dad? What would you gift to your dad? And I gave this topic to Ellery. Hello? I think you're going to have to give it to another one because he's a very uh, focused okay, uh, on what he needs right now. And he needs okay, no problem. I, I would give this to Toastmaster Latisha. Okay. Toastmaster. Yes. Toastmaster. Uh, 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 yes. Could you? Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, what I okay, would, to, uh, give my Toastmaster Latisha before you please start. The question? Okay. Yes. Before you start, yes. that is a trick to the trade. Okay. Close your eyes now. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Yes. Close yes. your eyes and listen to me. No. So, okay. your actual table topic question is, wh what would you give to your father? Now, when you open your eyes, whatever the first thing you see, that should be your gift to your father and you should tell us why you will gift that thing to your father. Okay. Thank you, Madam Table Topic Master. Yes. When I open my eyes, the first thing I see is my, uh, is the wedding photo of my father and mother yes anyway the best thing i am going to give them is the wedding photo okay which i have in my room okay that is the gift i'm going to give him not because of anything just to recall his sweet memories on a day like this and because of that my sweet marriage only i was able to bond and that is why i am here today what he has he has uh, anyway laid the foundation my father, and he is the one, he, although I'm married, my husband is my better half, but my father is my best half. He is my superhero. Anyway, always he has taught me to reach for the sun, even if you land on the moon. And always he asked me to shoot for the moon. Okay? Even if you miss, you will land among the stars. So that is the lesson. I never give up. So that my father will never give up when I show him the wedding photograph because he will never give up with his wife. I know he has never given up. He will never do it. So that this is what I am going to give him today. Just to recall that sweet memories, sweet, very sweet memories, Jewish memories he has had. And please recollect them and bring again that beautiful life back anyway. He has given birth to uh, he has given birth to two daughters and uh, we are able to live on uh, uh, on our feet without bending our head to anyone and uh, fully established and well accomplished daughters and that is the that is my father's effort I would say so that I whenever I present it yes it's here it's here I don't know if you all can see it's here uh, on my study table. I leave it because I want to be somebody like them. Because if they could live, 
for this much time. That's it. Okay. Back to you, table topic master. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank Toastmaster you, Latita. And you have given me such a wonderful idea for me to give my dad to, for tomorrow. Thanks a lot. And we are going for the next table topic. Uh, uh, topic. So this topic is, if I was to be a DC or a Marvel superhero, how would I fight coronavirus? I repeat again. If I was to be a DC or a Marvel superhero, how would I fight coronavirus? And I would like to give this topic to Toastmaster Sophia. Toastmaster Sophia, are we connected? Yes, I'm here. Good morning, fellow Toastmaster. Oh, great. Did you get the table topic? Um, okay. Yes. So if I understood well, the question is, if I were a, a superhero from the DC universe or, or Marvel, how would I fight coronavirus? Okay. I think I would probably try to, I would be, uh, what's his name? Oh. I would try to go back in time, <laughs> several years ago, where we were supposed to be planning you know, for this kind of virus that everybody knew that was coming. I even remember I gave a speech about a flu epidemic back when I was a Toastmaster at Georgia Tech, and that was in 2004. So at that time, we already knew that something like this was coming and that we should be preparing and all that. So I think I will go back in time and somehow encourage everybody to think more about planning um, and prepare us for something that's coming so that it doesn't um, catch us in the way that it did, especially to um, the, the areas and the countries that do not have enough resources. And at that time also realized you know, that we need to be taking care of all other places because now everything is so globalized that what happens you know, in a country that's remote and we have never heard of them or sometimes we don't even care, you know, it comes back to us really quickly. And that's how I would combat uh, if I were a superhero. Thank you. Fantastic, Toastmaster Sophia. Of course, I'll suggest all the recommendations to WHO and tomorrow you will get an email from WHO. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, going up with our final table topic. Uh, the topic is easy peasy breezy. Okay. I'll tell you the topic. You have to tell a monologue to your dad. You have to tell a monologue to your dad. It's very easy, peasy, breezy. Trust me, guys. Because you just have to start with one liner that I give you and put all your thoughts into that. Okay? So you have to, I'll tell it again, you have to give a monologue to your dad. And it has to has to start with the first sentence that I gave it to you. And the sentence is, Daddy, I am magnanimous because, Daddy, I am magnanimous because this, toast, uh, this table topic goes to Toastmaster Yolanda. Toastmaster Yolanda, are we connected? Yes, um, Madame Table Topics Master, we are connected. Thank you very Great. much. Thank you very much for that question. <clears throat> A monologue to my father. Mm, Daddy, I am magnanimous because because I am patient and I listen to 
most of my uh, colleagues. Uh, in fact, I am um, probably most magnanimous with my time. If uh, anybody comes to me and uh, wants to uh, talk about whether it's work-related or something that's causing them to be upset, I will be very magnanimous and generous with my time and listen to them. And this is something that I think you have um, gifted to me. I think that you have always been uh, very uh, helpful to me with uh, your advice and the time that you have spent with me. So, uh, Daddy, I am magnanimous because I've had you for a father. Madame Table Topics Master. Fantastic, very sharp, very crisp, but such a sweet order love to your dad, Yolanda. So, you know, your father will be really proud of you. And I, I really have a goosebumps, you know. <laughs> Thank you so much for such a wonderful monologue. And here we come to the end of our table topic. I'm sad because I have to leave, but I'm happy because I'm happy. Uh, another Toastmaster from your uh, club is going to come and give topics to our Toastmaster club. So looking forward and over to Toastmaster side. Thanks. Thanks, Lavalina, for those lovely topics. I enjoy table topics to the core of my heart, uh, especially when I'm not called upon to speak. So let the remaining part of fun begins. Uh, with the second table topic master. This, our second table topic master is from um, Dogwood Toastmasters Club. Uh, she joined Toastmasters uh, through Dogwood in 2009 upon John Cagile's urging after meeting him at an outplacement resource company after a company layoff. Tracy is single, lives with her aging parents and misses her soon to be 29 year old daughter who lives in Denver, Colorado. Tracy is known as the pickup artist as she has driven for Uber and Uber Eats for over four years. She, she also has a wealth of experience in sales and legal and is currently looking for her next new opportunity. And about her father, her father is an avid reader of John Grisham's books. As, as a well disciplined as a as well as self development and inspiration genres grocery shopping with dad was a lengthy adventure because he always stopped to talk uh, with strangers or those he knew as a result he had a very successful career running his running his own business fellow toastmasters and guests put your hands together for table topic master number 2 from Dogwoods Toastmaster Club, Toastmaster Tracy Ward. Good morning, good morning everyone. It's so great to see everyone this morning. I wanna go ahead and get right into the questions that I have. The first one is, first question goes, is this. Describe your dad, his physical traits, mannerisms, advice, his personality, and whatever, whatever your choice is. Describe your dad, his physical and personality traits, his mannerisms, and whatever else you want to share with us. And that question goes to Anna Rudia. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Uh, yes. Uh, can you repeat the topic, please? Yes, describe your dad, his physical and personality traits, mannerisms, and whatever else you want to share with us about your dad. Uh, thank you for the topic. So, uh, physical appearance of my dad is pretty much exactly the same as how I look. And uh, so whenever we go out, people usually assume that we are brothers or uh, something like that and then we have, we have a nice laugh and tell that he's actually my dad and I'm his son 
uh, is a little bit shorter than me and mannerisms uh, he wakes up very early in the morning so he, he wakes up at around 4:30 in the morning and he does yoga after getting up in the morning he starts at around 5:30 and does it till 7 and since the lockdown has started i have also joined him in doing yoga in the morning and it has been very beneficial for me uh, doing yoga and i can see the effects of doing yoga already even though i have only done it for around 3 months and he is a veterinarian by profession and he currently works uh, with cargill which is an american company so and he works as a technical lead for some of the products uh, yeah that's it thank you thank you thank you for that i'm going to go right in in the essence of time i'm going to go right into the next question and the next question is what is one of the most memorable moments with your dad what is one of the most memorable moments with your dad and that question goes to kirthi Kirthi here. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for the topic. Mm, so my most memorable moments with my dad. Uh, maybe the first time he took me to library. Actually, uh, I have the habit of reading the books uh, compared to with my other friends, cousins, uh, in the family. I'm the most big uh, reader. So actually, uh, when I'm a kid, I never liked reading books. I always hated it because I think it's some kind of nerdy thing or something like that. So my dad, uh, he always wanted me uh, to start reading books to explore it. so he ha- he did a very unique uh, way uh, first uh, he got me a comic book with uh, having a full of cartoons and colors which is very colorful so i get interested a bit that uh, uh, i was not so interested in it when when i saw it since it's a book but he gave it to me uh, in, in, in also a dictionary uh he just he didn't pressure me he just gave it gave it to me and he left uh, slowly after some time i just opened it and it was very colorful it was really uh, had good pictures and uh, i started reading it and uh, there are some words which i didn't understand so i opened a dictionary and i started uh, searching for the meaning i started reconnecting to the story and uh, in the one day i completed the whole book i was really excited i just went to my dad was this book is really good where did you got it from he was like get me another book like this sure no problem he got me another uh, same kind of some comic next after after two days and i completed it in a half day it was like a new world to me I was like this is really good did you like it he asked i said yeah i liked it then uh, uh, do you want to uh, see uh, more books like this i was like yeah sure no problem and he took me to the library the next day and he showed me that uh, uh, children section and he just uh, left me there and he went on going reading his newspapers and magazines he gave me the space uh, to choose and i went there i uh, took all the comics and everything and I started reading it and slowly my process of reading started from comics to a uh, small uh, bedtime stories next novels and next uh, uh, biographies and it continues till now so i think that one day that beautiful memory uh, changed my life brought into this uh, world of book reading so i'm really grateful for, for that and uh, i think that's the best memory i have so thank you for the topic thank you Thank you for sharing that with us. The next question that I have is what kind of work did your dad perform? Has it shaped who you are today? 
How and why, and if not, please share. What kind of work did your dad perform? Has it shaped who you are today? How and why, and if not, please share. That question goes to Ashen. Is Ashton here? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Uh, sorry, uh, Tracy, Ashton has left. Uh, he had some other work. Maybe you can call someone else. Okay. So then the next person would be Manaj. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you uh, for giving now me. Can, uh, I want to interrupt you just for a second. We can't see you. Yeah, I apologize for not, not coming on by screen. So I am on a mobile network. So if okay. I come on the screen, you would not be able to hear me. Okay, that's fine. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So good evening, fellow Toastmasters uh, and dear guests. And a very good, special good evening to Madam Toastmaster Tracy. What a wonderful topic that you have given to me. So what uh -huh. kind of a profession that uh, my father is in and has, has that uh, influenced uh, my uh, work that I'm doing or the profession that I'm right, right now into. So my father is a pure farmer and he's a, he's a very educated farmer and by doing farming, he's serving a lot, many people. And that's, that's how I see it. Because when a farmer grows uh, a crop that goes into the market and that's where we all are able to have food in our home. So the profession that I am right now is completely different from my father's profession. So I am into a software profession, profession, profession which, is, which is completely different, but we, we serve the same purpose. So the industry that I am right now is, uh, is serving different clients. So farmer also serves in his or her domain and, and I am also serving in my domain, but it is little, the domain, it's, the domains are different, but it's just, we have to magnanimous in serving whatever work or the service that we do in our society. One thing that I would like to bring, which I have learned from, from my father, and that he keeps telling me even today when, when we meet him. Uh, unfortunately, we are in two different uh, towns. So he keeps saying that you have to be magnanimous in everything you do. And you have to think about the society if you can pass on anything to the society. And he keeps telling me and be, be honest whatever you do. And the things will automatically will come back to you. So if you serve others, people will definitely start serving you. So be, be focused on that. So thank you once again for giving me such a wonderful topic. Over to Madam Toastmaster Tracy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, and on to the next question. Sports or fine arts? Which could your dad hold a conversation on? When I say fine arts, I'm talking about the music, theater, film, painting, that, that sort of thing. So sports or fine arts, which could your dad hold a conversation on? And that's the question. And that question goes to uh, DTM Jagadesh. Good evening and good morning there. I would say fine arts for a simple reason. The fine art gives you an option to choose many. We can become magnanimous in fine arts than the other one. By fine arts, through music, we can create empathy. We can touch people's heart, which we can't do in the other one. So for sure, fine arts gives an option to be creative, which we are all born to be creative. We're all here to make a mark. So if you choose fine arts, you can be whatever you want, you can touch people's heart and create empathy, be a magnanimous. So I would choose to be 
fine art. Over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the last question that I have <clears throat> is, uh, is this. A fashionista is a devout follower of fashion. Was dad a fashionista or would he leave his fashion style to someone else's discretion? Again, a fashionista is a devout follower of fashion. Was dad a fashionista or would he leave his fashion style to someone else's discretion? And that question goes to Shakrapani. Shakrapani. Are you there? Yes. Uh, hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, good morning, Tracy, and uh, all my fellow Toastmasters. Good morning. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, my dad. Uh, my dad is a fashionista. Okay, and uh, his fashion is mostly driven by the decisions of my mom. <laughs> okay, so uh, so whatever is the trend uh, of that day, uh, so uh, uh, so when I was a little boy, uh, the trend at that day was a bell-bottom uh, uh, pants, yeah. uh, which used to come in the uh, the movies of that time. Uh, so my uh, dad used to go out with uh, bell-bottom pants and uh, uh, with uh, the hippie style of uh, haircut <laughs> so and uh, so sometimes uh, uh, so uh, he, uh, he used to be cut down uh, by my mom so my mom my mom is the uh, overseer of his uh, uh, fashion and how he is following the latest fashion of that time um, yeah, uh, so that's what, uh, that's all I have. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you so much. So that is the end of my table topic questions. And I will turn the uh, meeting back over to the Toastmaster. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Toastmaster Tracy, for the wonderful session with, the, with your table topics. And before we move, out, move ahead to our last session, uh, I would like to ask Toastmaster Ronald, are we going to conduct one more uh, poll yes. here? Elan Govan, did everyone qualify? Uh, hello. Yeah, yes. table topic master and others. Yeah, I think uh, two people have been disqualified. Who are they? Uh, yeah, both are from Resonance. Uh, Keith Rish, Keith Shri, she took more than two minutes and uh, 57 seconds. Okay. And uh, DTM Jagdish took only 55 seconds. <clears throat> Great. Yeah, so both of them are disqualified. All others are qualified. Over to you, sir. Okay, so just give me a second to make people not to take away the co-host privileges for all of you so that you can vote. So I just need to withdraw permission from most of you temporarily. And I think I've got everyone. All right, so now we should be able to launch the poll without any difficulties. Right. Uh, oh, let's see. Ah, I need to save it first. All right. Uh, saved. Right. Here we go with the polling. Here we go. There they all are. Vote for your favorite. This reminder, Kirthirsi Kari and Jagadish did not qualify.
I got six more to go. By the way, Fern said that she had to leave and uh, so she won't be voting. Right, right, of course. Yes. Oh, we have a winner. Oh, good. We still have five more people to vote. Vote early and often. Looks like we have a winner. One more. Oh, now we've got a tie. Oh boy, this is exciting. <laughs> Two more people need to vote to break the tie. All right. All right. All right, one more. Okay, has everyone had a chance to vote? Okay, we, we have our winner, so I'll end the poll and announce it at the end of the meeting, keep you all in suspense. Okay, okay. Okay. Thanks. All right, so. Thanks. We'll the, okay. Thanks, I'll, Toastmaster. Thanks, Toastmaster Donald. Uh -huh. And with this, it's uh, time to dive into our last session. Uh, which is very crucial and we will be seeing where we excel and where we have room for improvement. May I call upon once again Toastmaster Halpat as general evaluator of the day. Toastmaster Halpat. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah, and we have, uh, we've already had our evaluations, correct? The speech evaluators? No. no. No, 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 no. Okay, so that's what that's the first order of business then. We'll start with evaluator number one, who is evaluating the run, Kay Colson. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters, and especially Varun. This was an interesting speech because mentoring is such an important part of teamwork and it's such an important part of success. And being a protege has responsibilities just like being a mentor. Varun, as always, your voice was strong, you were well paced, and you used the most important technique that we Toastmasters have at our disposal, and that is a personal story. You talked about your own approach to selecting two mentors and how you then engaged with them, how you interacted with them, and your story, your journey helped us to visualize and understand what you did to really take advantage of this wonderful technique. You used you had great use of words. Words were great fun. Words that were succinct and they were clear and they helped us to understand how you were feeling at the time. Like brutally honest. Two words, we can visualize it. No question about it. Good to go. Very quick, very up to date, very clear. And my favorite, my speech was savaged, a savage speech. We've all had that opportunity to feel that way and you brought it to us in your speech. It was wonderful. Now let's talk about your biggest challenge in this particular speech and that is this, technology. On my screen, you were frozen the entire time. I didn't get the advantage of seeing your smile, I didn't get it, the advantage of seeing your, your, your hand motions or leaning forward or the, the many things that we're learning to do now that we are working through technology to speak to one another. I would recommend to you that in the future, you test beforehand. You have a little checklist. Is my Wi-Fi working? Do I have my video on? Am I in the best place for my Wi-Fi or will it cut in and out? Have I told everybody in the family or in the office that I am busy now, please do not interrupt. These are all critical elements to making sure your speech is not interrupted inadvertently or the value of your speech isn't limited by the technology. But here's one of the most important challenges that I would give to you. Your speech was about Toastmasters. This one of your challenges, one of your objectives was to talk about Toastmasters perspective of what mentoring is. You focused very much on the second objective, and that is your experience as a protege. 
So I think that you could have interspersed there a little bit about what it is that Toastmasters recommends for mentors. And I also think that you could have taken, followed a technique that I have found useful over the years, and that is write your closing remarks first. You may change them, but write them first because it helps to give you a roadmap to what you're trying to accomplish. Great speech, always love to hear you speak. Want to hear another one, thank you. Ah, uh, great, thank you, thank you Kay. And our first speaker was Fern, and she will be evaluated by uh, Arjan. Uh, a very good morning to my non-present here, and a special evening to Toastmaster Fern. The brightest stars are the ones that shine for the longest time. Madam Toastmaster Fern, Today you shined, enlightened, and awed the audience. Mind you, this was an impromptu icebreaker where you spoke without in it, off the cuff, and flexed the different muscles involved in public speaking. The very first positive aspect that I noticed was you were comfortable enough being uncomfortable. The purpose of impromptu speaking is getting lost in the purpose and discovering what you find. You had two main challenges, which were speaking impromptu and also at the same time, making sure that you followed the guidelines of icebreaker speech. Your speech was a culmination of experience and wisdom. Your diction was as clear as the ringing bells in a silent morning. You <laughs> were an expert in your material and in turn, you, that freed you up. You connected, you talked, about how you inherited the art of risk-taking from your dad. You shared the nostalgic times that you had with him and also highlighted that it's not just about taking risks, but also having a backup plan is equally important. The picture that you drew about your father was endearing. As Toastmasters is a place to learn with a chance to grow, I have one suggestion point for you. I believe that the conclusion was a bit hasty. You could have flown your verbal Cessna for a little more time, circling the landing turf for a while, giving a bird's view of the core points of your speech, and once again, before you landed. In the end, Toastmaster Fun, you just didn't box the way through the ice, but you knocked it down. It was a pleasure and an honor to evaluate your speech and also to fly with you. Over to you. Great, thank you. Thank you. Very good, and I'm sorry that Fern isn't here to hear that, but I imagine she will be able to get a recording of that if it was recorded, so um, if not, uh, yeah, we'll have to tell Fern what uh, an evaluation she missed. Now, our next up, I believe I'll evaluate the minor roles in our program, such as the grammarian and uh, Nikinji. Are you prepared as grammarian to give us our uh, ah count, etc.? cetera? I'm a counter. Oh, whoa, 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 okay. Yes, you have a grammarian, I believe. Okay, yeah, I do want Jagadish. Jagadish, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Greetings once again to everybody. It was a pleasure to be part of this meeting. I learned a lot. And today as a grammarian also, I could see a lot of learnings from Dago Toastmasters in particular. Today, there are more than half a dozen people use the word magnanimous. They are Tainat, Bon, Kate, Fern, Varun, Lavanya, and Manoj. The list of quotes, thoughts, words, or saying that I liked are astonished, seldom, empathetic, combat, succinct, brutally honest. I'm not perfect, neither you. Speak slowly and clearly. That is a take home for me. We learn by doing. Man plans, God lost. Mm -hmm. Sugar coat the truth. Mentors see hope inside yourself. Few grammatical user suggestions for improvements are 
hammer was banging on my head could be hammer was banged on my head in my opinion long time toastmaster could be seasoned toastmaster spelling out could be read out o to mr hal platt ah uh, thank you thank you thank you very much um now now it's time for the grammarian mckenji yes good greetings everyone today's report was written with quite a few filler words quatch words and repeat words what i've done i'm going to give you a grand total of what was used but you will be able to consult with the chat to see the breakdown this is how it appeared for the ends we had a total of 37 ends we had three well we had six but we had 29 so we had two you know we had 31 61 us we had 12 um we had six repeat words let us be mindful of the sirs and arms they seem to come too naturally we want to make them become unnatural but that is the count and you can consult the chat for the breakdown with everybody's us um sirs over to you mr john evaluator uh, thank you, Nikinji, and thank you for this nice summary that you put in the chat about all the ahs and ums, and uh, that may need to be amended after I get through uh, through this portion of the meeting. The uh, I assume that's all the minor roles before my wrap up, right? Uh, well, we need to vote. we need to vote for best evaluator. Oh, that's a good idea. did <laughs> both of our evaluators. Yeah. Yes, yes, Toastmasters. Uh, both, uh, yeah, both the evaluators have qualified. There's no problem in that. Uh, evaluator K has spoken for three minutes and two seconds. Uh, evaluator Arjun has spoken for two minutes and seven seconds. So both of them are qualified. Okay, voting is taking place. Wonderful, and it is so, so helpful if people chime in and help me <laughs> in this portion of the meeting. Now, are we ready to, for my grand summary of the meeting? Yes. yes. Great. Well, a well-run meeting, Sai, and uh, I, I wish I had uh, prepared more. And I thought about last night, you know, sending an email out saying, you know, what am I supposed to do? And I thought, oh, I can wing it. You know, it'll be easy. No, it's not <laughs> easy. Um, it was a challenge for me uh, because I didn't have everything together. And I just wished, you know, that I had sent that email out and gotten an agenda and gotten everything in order before the meeting started. But every challenge prepares us for something more. So I'm going to be ready next time. I'm an evaluator. Great word of the day to choose uh, magnanimous. I, uh, the philosophy of, uh, where it was delivered, Edwina delivered it as if she was addressing her father. Great job, uh, good rules for communicating. And uh, I, I, I like that the joke matched the theme of the day. And uh, it was for the uh, table topics. Uh, something new that was introduced is, uh, well, the table topics master, and I am referring to one of my many schedules here of uh, uh, Lavania, Lavania, uh, creative table topics. And I like the fact that you sold the table topic before you delivered it and you added a twist to each table topic. Uh, okay, I'll move along. Uh, uh, oh, I had other things to say. Yeah. Oh, uh, Introducing the evaluations before the speech through me, but I think it's a great, great thing to, for the evaluator to prep the audience for the speech and uh, give the, the um, requirements of the speech and a little bit about the speech. Mixed feelings about the timer. It was easy to see, you know, and uh, it came on, but I think the sound is jarring and it's a little bit distracting because it takes up 
consume some of the other Zoom features. But I love that timer in that, you know, I can use it on my phone, I found out. I went to that uh, website, uh, the timer website, tmtimercelebgrove.com, and it comes up on my phone perfectly. Uh, but uh, I, w w at Dogwood, we have some troubles with the timer because you don't see it, you don't notice it. And then that is the other extreme where that's all you see. And, you know, but, but having the clock in front of you and as a speaker, I think it's great. And as a tabletop participants, I think it's great. So it's, it's a, something to think about. So I'll leave you with something to think about. And that concludes my evaluation of the, the general evaluation of the meeting. And I'll return control to Cy. Well, I try to return control. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Dave. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Hal. Thanks for that wonderful, elaborate uh, evaluation done by you. Appreciate. Uh, now, uh, these are, we all know that these are unprecedented times and we all need father figures. Who doesn't need father to <clears throat> give advice uh, during these uh, testing times? Uh, not only for people from USA, but people from America, uh, uh, whole of India and whole world. Uh, we are looking for motivations. And I think um, this is high time for all the fathers to chip in and motivate others. Uh, and I'm sure that we all will sail through this uh, pretty soon, uh, as I can believe. And uh, Thanks. I would like to thank uh, Dogwood Toastmasters uh, for uh, accepting our invite. And uh, this is second time. I hope uh, we will see this type of meetings going forward because you are like father figure for our club. And we look forward to more guidance and advice uh, from a veteran club like you. And uh, with this, I enjoyed thoroughly this meeting. I hope everyone enjoyed. And uh, with this, I would like to hand over uh, to, for closing presidential remarks to toast, uh, Toastmaster Aditya. Aditya. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Sai, for wonderfully conducting this meeting. In fact, uh, I was, after listening to all of your speeches, it was very emotionally satisfying to know how much all your fathers, your respective fathers, have been contributing to your well being. Uh, I believe that. Uh, we should not be celebrating Father's Day just for one day. We should celebrate Father's Day every day, and we should be showing their. We should be showing our gratitude to them each and every minute because they deserve it. So thank you so much uh, for all the members from Dogwood Toastmasters, and a special thanks to President uh, Toastmaster Sal and Distinguished Toast Toastmaster uh, Ron for being magnanimous and. Uh, making the agenda meticulously and having a great international linkers meet. Uh, I, I would just like to request all of you to come on the video so that we all take one selfie because it is one of a kind of meeting. Uh, I request uh, the members who are using the laptop to take a screenshot of this meeting and I also request all the members to come on the screen and say hi or thumbs up or a silent applause. Just keep in mind, we're over two screens because we have so many people today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can anyone yes, take uh, please take, yeah, please take on both the screens, Ron, or Sal, anyone. Okay. Nice. Uh, is it done? I'm, I'm still doing a screen print. Okay. Okay, I got screen number one. And let's see, I'll do screen number two. Okay, screen number two. All right. Let's see, get this out here. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Distinguished Toastmaster Ron. Okay. Um, and uh, I now request uh, Ron to uh, tell the results of, of the poll. Uh, 
Okay, so the re we'll start off with table topics. We had a three-way tie. Hmm. Chakrapani, Yolande, and Latisha. It was a three-way. All had each had six votes. Wow! Uh, congratulations to them. Best evaluator goes to Arjun. Arjun, yes. Silent applause. Arjun, congratulations. Okay. And best speaker goes to Varun. Congratulations to Varun, Arjun, and uh, uh, Latisha, Kirti, and uh, one more. Yolande. <laughs> Sorry? Yolande. Yolande, okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's Chakrapani. Adi. Excuse me? Yes. Latisha, Chakrapani, and Yolande. Isn't it? Uh, Yolande and Latisha, yes. Uh -huh. Congratulations. And uh, uh, if I may take two minutes uh, of your time, we have a guest from our club who are attending this meeting for the very first time. We have uh, Chandu and uh, Manoj. If you uh, both can take turn uh, to come on the screen and share with us in one line what you felt about today's meeting. First up, shall we have Manoj and then we can have Chandu. Um. Hello. Hello. I think. Uh, well, what about uh, Mr. Chandu? Uh, can you come on the screen, please? Uh, Aditya, uh, even I think uh, Toastmaster uh, Chandu is also offline. Okay, I think even... Okay, fine. I think they are not available. Uh, with this, uh, thank you so much for this wonderful meeting. It was really great. Uh, and and have a great day to Dogwood, to Dogwood Toastmasters. And I would like to hand over the control to the president of Dogwood Toastmaster, Toastmaster Sal. Um, thank you, Aditya. And Sai for doing a great job today uh, for hosting the entire meeting. Um, today is a great, great day to you know celebrate. Like I said, Father's Day. I know I'm getting my dad a lap dance at a certain kind of club, so I'll be very happy. Um, so I um I want to say I, we should probably we should do this again in the future for sure. Um, I want to thank everybody on to thank I want to thank everybody for putting this together. It was great. Um, with that, hearing another, I also want to congratulate all our officers on the Pro Dogwood Toast Masters. Congratulations, and uh, be bear, prepared to be uh, burdened with more paperwork today. So, I want to so I'll move to you know the business. Uh, is there here? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second, um, seen as um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Meeting has been adjourned. Thank you, residents, Toastmasters. Thank you, Aditya and Sai. Thank you, everybody. Varun, it's been great. I think there's still a meeting after the meeting, though. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thank Thanks, all of you. Thank you all. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful knowing. Wonderful knowing all of you. Exactly. Dogwood is uh, an extended family now, isn't it? Uh -huh. Thank Absolutely. you, Sal, Ron. <laughs> Ron, Nanke, Ellery. And especially thanks to Mr. Sai, sir, also. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Amit. Thanks, thanks for attending meeting. <laughs> thank you, thank sir. You thank you. Thanks yeah. to all. Congratulations, Varun and Arjun and Yolanda. Shukrapani, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations keep, to all the winners. Keep rocking. Keep resonating. Yes, keep wow, rocking. That's keep great. Resonating. Thank you. And uh, bye thanks. Bye. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. Oh, thank, thank you, you, Suhan. Nice to see you, Suhan. Yeah.
Yeah, nice to see you guys. I mean, it's nice to see you all after a long time, maybe. Perfect. Love to see you yes, again. Yes. Thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Kay. Hi, Larry. Nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you too. Thanks, Tom. Same here. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, Varun. Enjoy the speech. Very good to see two mentors, a professional mentor and a Toastmaster mentor, right? Oh, oh yeah. You can you, great. You, you can never have enough, You're right? Two mentors. <laughs> That's neat. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye. I'm leaving. Bye. 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 Have a great weekend. Yeah. Have a great Father's Day with your wonderful dads, everyone. Yeah, everybody. For me, every day it's a weekend here. <laughs> <laughs> right, good topics, Tracy and Lavanya, both of you. Very good topics, all related to the dad. <laughs> Very good. All, all the speakers could speak, no? It is good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Great. Sal, with that I was reminded of uh, Al Pacino from uh, uh, Center of a Woman. Were you, oh, were yes. you trying to? <laughs> I was uh, thinking of the same Was thing. it that? Yeah. <laughs> Great analogy. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Huh? <laughs> yeah, just uh, so like in, within the army, anyways, I don't think the Air Force might use the same thing, but anytime, it's basically meaning anything and everything minus no. So, for example, okay. you're, you agree with me? Who? Cool. Do you disagree with me? Who? Cool. It's just, it's just a good response for thing. You're, are you dumb as a rocks? Who? Cool. Cool. You have any idea what I'm saying? Who? 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 It's just a motivation. Cool. And then the Marines say hoorah. Because cool. I'm Marine. I think it's so, I think the, yeah, the Marines, yeah. Well, <laughs> the Marines, like Army, have like this comp competitive thing. The Air Force, Air Force thinks we're stupid. Uh, well, <laughs> we think the Marines are stupid. Well, correction: the Air Force and Navy think that the Marines and Air Army, Marine and Army, are completely stupid, and that the Air Force is the most intelligent. And the Navy thinks whatever they're like they're more intelligent. We say <laughs> Army is the Air Force is the most intelligent. Air Force. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Um, <laughs> Toastmaster Sal, have you come to Kuwait? Uh, no, my friends have gone there, though. Um, but actually, I do have a buddy of mine. Um, he used to be a, one of the soccer players on the national team for Kuwait. He did invite me to come over. So he told me just buy, buy a ticket, and I'd go hang out with them at some time. So I'll probably do that in the near future. He's a good. Yeah, it's I mean, Kuwait. Kuwait's a, from what I've been told, it's a beautiful place. Um, so it's, I've been wanting to visit there. Just uh, I hit him up a couple months back. Actually, he said just buy the ticket. I go over there. <laughs> it's a little far. Yes, you're always far away, Sal. The airplane, the airfare might be a little expensive to get there. Yeah, but I'm right saying slightly. Yeah, can try. I visited a meeting from the Don Bosco Toastmasters Club in Kuwait. Oh, okay. I don't know if you're familiar with that club, but I attended their meeting one, one day. Wonderful. Yes. Oh, yes. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. I Bye. wish you all Bye. a happy Bye. Father's Day, all the fathers and all the sons. Wish you happy Father's Day and vice versa. <laughs> Thank you all. It was wonderful meeting. <laughs> Thank you. See you, you sir. Happy Bye. Father's Day. Yeah. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye, bye everyone. That's bye. Bye. Thank you all. I enjoyed bye. It. A lot of fun. See you, Captain Sal. Bye. Bye. See everyone. you. Room. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye. I'm off to next week. Have a great day. Enjoy too. the rest bye. of it. Bye. Bye. Wow, this was the best counter evaluation I have ever seen in five years. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was like you were, you were putting out everything on an Excel. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a learning experience every time you enter this domain. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to, the topics were wonderful, Tracy. Thank you. I'd like, I'd like to con like to congratulate all of us. Uh, when you look at how much better we've gotten at conducting a joint True. meeting since Isn't our first effort, seven months. Yeah. <laughs>
it's the difference of <laughs> night and day. We've, we've, we're, we're geniuses, aren't we? Like hey, we should congratulate yeah. ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be better, but... Oh, Ron, Ron is always on the top of his game. Nice to see you again, Ron. <laughs> John, Sal, everyone. Good to have all of you guys here with us. Yeah, let's let's make it a regular exercise piece. <laughs> Tracy, those were good questions that you put out. Oh, thank like you. Fashionista yes. and some of the others, they were yeah. good. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they were fun. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I honestly didn't think the fashionista question was going to fly, but it certainly did. It turned out to be <laughs> a great question. It, it went over. Oh, really, fine. yeah. <laughs> fine for but, best table topic. Yeah. Maybe, maybe because my father wasn't much of a fashionista. <laughs> he was more of an accountantista. Accountantista. <laughs> <laughs> no, was mine. He was more of a cricket I thought fan. Close of Costco. Yeah. Thank you. Glad everybody enjoyed it. Yeah. It was fun getting. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Anyone? Did anyone bring snacks? This time? Uh, we, we ate had, our snacks. We had some in and the bombs. No, we didn't bring snacks. Okay, time. I've got I've got some coffee. <laughs> uh, would you pour me a cup? Sure, sure. Here. It. Absolutely. Oops, almost got my computer wet. <laughs> I've done that on occasion. Oh dear. I have a question for you guys. It, you know, uh, I know Hal got caught by surprise. But does it make sense to kind of run down just a quick and dirty in the beginning of the meeting about what the evaluation is, what, what the evaluators are going to be doing and remind people that they're there and acknowledge them? Uh, I know it's one more step, but I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. And I definitely like the objectives being stated before, but you have to prepare for that. If you don't, you don't have them. I'm pretty sure that Hal uh, likes flying by the seat of his pants, much like, <laughs> much like Fern in her airplane. Uh, Hal just doesn't have an airplane. That's the only difference. <laughs> the other thing is I think we do have to be careful of time because we've all been on this thing for an hour and 45, two hours and 45 minutes, a long time. And it's easy when you got that many. I found it confusing because I had so many screens of people. I didn't even know how many were there. And sometimes the speaker wasn't up on the screen. And it's, uh, it's a whole logistical thing that we're learning about how do you manage time while you've got um, so many people involved, both in planning and also in, uh, also in delivering too. So, so I think we had up to about 45 people, if you count two people in some of the windows. We were only seven minutes past the allotted time because- Yeah, we did pretty good. Were we supposed to go to 1030? Yes, six to, six to 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I think maybe I was just unclear on a lot of pieces of it. Right, the, right. Uh, the... 30 to 10 30 Eastern. Oh, I see. Okay. Indian Standard Time. Yeah. Okay, well, so that's not so bad. It's yeah, just a long good. two and a half hours is a long time for people last to time, be on a Zoom call. Last time we were 15 minutes over, so we're getting better. <laughs> getting better. Well, you know, I, I would just point out that I've had a lot of people, because everybody uses Zoom so much, Talk about the longer it is, the more likely you are to lose people because it's a long time to be sitting in front of the screen. Right, well, and that's why we like to have our break. <laughs> I, I, think, I think the break uh, could have been a little, either a little longer or better defined because yeah. uh, I might have gotten up for a minute or two, you know what I mean? But I didn't because the break was over before I realized it started. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't know we were on a break. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to whip the team into shape better next time. Yeah. Said, well, I think the other thing too is that you know if if uh, Hal had known what he was that this was going to be different from what he was used to, <laughs> that might have been helpful. I think these are all the little things that help us to to manage the time. The communication goes a long way. I think the opening speech that. Aditya gave was extremely long-winded. That that threw me for a loop. I wasn't expecting him to give like a ten-minute speech. Yeah. Well, again, it was, nice. it was a it was a nice introduction, but I wasn't yeah. expecting that to be so it was long. unexpected. When you give someone the floor, Ron. huh? I was kind of surprised, Ron, because when you did the when you laid out the uh, the one for the first one, you were very clear on timing on each of the segments. 
Yeah, well, it was, helpful. it was helpful for people to know, you know, I've got two minutes or I've got three minutes. Uh, and I know it's tedious, but when you're going to do two hours worth of people back and forth, it helps to know. And I do think um, because we're learning more about who, um, how we do dear things differently, again, when somebody's in a role that they don't know about, and as, as Hal said, he should have raised his hand and said, wait a second, what's expected of me? Just need to do that a little. The more we do it, the better we'll get. And I think doing a quarterly meeting with them would be great fun. Yeah. yeah especially now that we're going to be a hybrid club. Yep. Could and be a lot of have fun. to coordinate like that is especially important to plan out the details, like the detail planning sheet that we have, something like that we could share with them next meeting. Yeah, yeah our, agen our agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Because even on the agenda, we could have put timing, like amount of time that each person needed. Yeah. yeah, well, see, the I wasn't the Toastmaster this time. The the Toastmaster from was from him was from residents. Oh, okay. That's what the okay. difference was. And he sent out the agenda on Facebook. Oh. Well, it, might be, it, might be, yeah, it might be good if um, oh. we get the you and Sal and maybe their president and and their uh, Toastmaster together and just say let's debrief and share like some of these thoughts with them and they can share with their members too. That's where we you know that that could be an effective follow up for this. Week. Yeah, because he could have just sent it had a list of all of our emails and just sent it to, via email. Then we would have all gotten it. I had no idea it was on Facebook. Yeah. Or send it to us because we sent it to them to distribute back in November, if I recall correctly. Right. I remember. Well, I I sent him the list of names yeah. and the roles. So I, I I sent him that. But he could have. But if if he had sent us the the um, agenda, as it were. We could have distributed it to our list. I think that's what Tracy's saying. Right. I uh, just, rather than yeah. having dependent on Facebook or the really early in the morning. I mean, I usually try to print it out at night on Saturday night, Friday night, so that I have it. But I ran out of steam last night. I didn't do it. So then I felt like I was blind, blind. Yeah. Plus, it was also very hard to to print because it was gray against black or gray against white. It was hard to read. Just little things like that. That are helpful to all the participants. All right. But I think we go back to it was a great meeting. It was lots of energy, right. and a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and uh, we ought to do it more. Really, I'd love to go to once a quarter. I think that would be a great way to, to do I, that. I think we should yeah. take some pointers from residents because uh, you know, if you notice, they got more of the votes than we did. So There's perhaps we need to too. practice up a little bit in between these quarterly meetings we're going to be having. There's more of them than there are of us. <laughs> there, that's a big crowd. <laughs> but you're right. We got to show the saw here. <laughs> they had some good stuff, and I think we had too many awes, frankly. <laughs> and I liked how they did their the timing. I think we might um, learn something from that. How he was able to change the color, and we could actually see the timer. You know, the the amount of time. I thought was, I found I like that, that that was very helpful. I liked when it went way over time, the reds just started flashing. Yes, <laughs> yes. exactly. <laughs> it's a right. wave of flag. I liked it too, because the other thing is with well, one we're using, which I really like where the background behind the person comes up, I like it. But when you got multiple screens, the speaker's not gonna see it. Right. You know, it's gotta be a screen share. When you're speaking, you pin the timer. And then you, you pin the timer. But I don't think anybody knows how to do that. That's that's, that's something we got to share. How hard is that to do? You just right click and click pin the top pin. I know, and now we have um, seven people that know how to do it. Well, I, mean, yeah. I, I, I think it's need to let people know, and and maybe it would be good now that we're learning these things, Ron. That do we we do another session, uh, John, or do we do a speech on here's some tips of things in using Zoom that we've talked about that maybe you don't know or you don't remember. Because I know one of the things I watch the people on their phone sometimes sit back and then all we're seeing is the top of their head. They need to remember to set it so that we can see them the whole time. There's still a I'm, lot of little things that we could share with people that might help. I may do a speech in the future. I've got a pretty good setup now. We did a, uh, 
we did an hour and a half conference presentation last Saturday uh, that Dee and her son did. So I have a, uh, a 12 foot wide um, gray paper backdrop and an eight foot wide green screen. So uh, I'm, I'm getting there and, uh, and I figured out with the green screen, uh, it's critical to have certain types of lighting. So I'm working on refining the lighting. Uh, if you have a light overhead, this one's a little glaring, but um, it helps prevent that that halo effect you get from your hair that you yeah. know where your hair starts merging with the back with the virtual background. <laughs> There's some tips like that, so uh, I may do a speech on that. I'm doing a speech next week, but it's not on that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, good meeting. Good to see everybody. Yeah. Suhan, yeah. what what time is it where you are? Uh, well, it's going to be um, five minutes to six. A.M. or P.M.? <laughs> P.M. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. I thought it was later than That's that. not so bad. He's in <laughs> Kuwait, not not Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Once I get past the East Coast and the West Coast of the U.S., I'm never quite sure. But. I, I thought being in the trucking business, you'd know more geography. <laughs> in the United <laughs> States, yes. <laughs> so has anyone of you have gone to Dubai? Pardon? No. Uh, has no. anyone of you have visited Dubai? No. Uh, no, I've heard it's quite beautiful, though. Okay. I've not. I, came, I came close once. I was in the southern France. Oh, okay. That's as close as I got. It's not very <laughs> close. <laughs> <laughs> Have you and been? How about Kuwait? Oh, yeah, they have a lot of large buildings in Dubai. Yes. Beautiful buildings. All of them are new. Yes, it's quite. Um, you know, they're just. It's all um, man-made kind of thing. I mean, just want to attract tourists over there. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, in Kuwait, and there's nothing much, but we are doing good over here. And Dubai and Atlanta have something in common. They both have airports. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, John. <laughs> We're very proud of our airport. I might warn you, John has an interesting perspective on the world. You can always be. Yeah. Uh, where, where, where are you based in the US exactly? Atl Atlanta. Atlanta, OK. Yeah, I, I, I knew my, I know my friend who was living in Atlanta before, and now he is in Kuwait. Um, oh, wow, okay. So yes. very nearby, we have the Centers for Disease Control, Emory oh, yes, University, my, uh, yes. Georgia Tech. Oh, you said Emory University, right? Yes, yeah. it's, it's... My, my friend has uh, studied there too. Ah. Oh, nice. And Georgia Tech isn't too far away. Okay. And uh, it isn't, let's see, Sophia, who talked about the uh, pandemic, doesn't she work for the CDC? No, she, I think she was, well, she went to tech. I think maybe she works for the CDC, yes. She was at tech. So we have members of our club who work for the Centers for Disease Control. Mm 